Today we're announcing a new partnership with the National Sheriff's Association. I'd like to invite Jonathan Thompson, who is the Executive Director of the National Sheriff's, Sheriff's Association, to join me on the stage as we announce a new task force to address one of the greatest challenges facing county governments. As county leaders, we focus on solutions. This task force will examine the Medicaid inmate exclusion policy, which strips federal health and veterans benefits from individuals upon admission to jail, not upon conviction, terminating federal benefits from those who are presumed innocent is a violation of their constitutional rights. It also, <laughs> it also leads to increased recidivism and increased burdens on local taxpayers. With more than two million people in jail with serious mental illnesses, disorders, and substance use disorders, continuity of care can help stop the revolving door of incarceration. Our task force will study this serious problem and offer solutions and policy recommendations to Congress and the administration. This is the right thing to do. We are pleased to name the members of this task force. You can see the names of those individuals on the screen behind me. They've got a big job in front of them, and I know that they're up to the, the task that is being presented to them. We thank these county leaders, including sheriffs, prosecutors, and behavioral health experts, and we hope you all will join us at our policy briefing tomorrow afternoon on Capitol Hill. And we look forward to working with Jonathan and the National Sheriffs Association in the months ahead. Jonathan, I want to give you an opportunity to say a few words. Mr. President, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. That's the county associations I know. We have a crisis confronting us. I don't need to repeat the numbers, but I do need to make a couple of uh, observations. Every day in this country, more than 300,000 individuals are in our jails, in your jails, for one reason only, because they are mentally ill. That illness caused them or their communities harm because of no other reason than they had an illness. Today, as we sit here, our federal government has an obligation. It's part of the moral and social code we must share. To me, a father of two children that have mental illnesses, we can't do this alone. We cannot arrest our way out of the opioid crisis, and we certainly can't arrest our way out of the mental illness crisis facing this country. Asking sheriffs, jail administrators, county executives, county board members, commissioners, city councils to carry this burden is unconscionable. This is our humanitarian obligation. We must treat these people with dignity. We must treat them with respect. But please, please stop putting them in jails. Put them where they belong. Tomorrow, you get to talk to Congress about it. Share those personal stories that you have, because you do have them. Tell them about the 17-year-old who woke up one day because he had schizophrenia and couldn't control his rage. Tell them about the 35-year-old with PTSD, who did nothing more than decide that it was so hot out he had to take his clothes off to stay cool. Tell them about those family members that you probably have or know about who are in there in your custody now or in the sheriff's custody. We cannot, 
we cannot do this anymore. The most civilized nation in the world is locking up people for one reason, because they are mentally ill or addicted to a drug. Ladies and gentlemen, together we can fix this crisis. I ask you, I call upon you, I implore you, help us fix this problem. Thank you. God bless you all.